Welcome to this special news update uh, right from our studio here in London, Ben Television. Uh, I'm glad you're watching. Uh, we recall the happenings of 2011 when McDogan was shot and many believe uh, unlawfully shot. But of course, the government said he was lawfully shot. And uh, so many things have happened between 2011 and now many have gone to jail uh, for stealing a bottle of water. And uh, so many things happened. But then yesterday, the Independent uh, Police Complaints Commission said that uh, there was nothing to change that uh, he was lawfully killed and the policeman did nothing wrong uh well i have in the studio uh the gentleman who has been following this case right from the beginning to give us a background to give us the follow-up and uh, the latest coming out of uh, ipcc only yesterday his name is Ken Hens is the chairman uh, having an independent stop and search uh, group, uh, monitoring group. You're welcome, Mr. Hens. Thank you very much, Dr. Uh, Johnson. Uh, let me first of all say we are glad to have you here. Uh, it is a privilege to get you on this short notice, and we're grateful that you are here. But uh, this is uh, something of a very great importance to our community here in Haringey and in London. Um, you, would you like to give us a background of what happened uh, before, before we saw this 2011 riot? Yes, okay. On, on August, August, of, August the 5th, 20, 2011, um, uh, Mark Duggan was sh shot and killed um, by the police uh, in Tottenham Hill. Um, the, the, the initial report that came out stated that but from the IPCC, who was supposed to be independent, um, said that he was involved in a shootout. Now, people just could not believe that. And within, within several days, there was a, a, a major disturbance that, that went nationwide. But it could have been a, a shootout because no gun was found on his person. That, that, well, the, the, the reason they thought it was a shootout yeah. was because the, the policeman who shot Mark Duggan also shot his own colleague. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. So it, it was a policeman who shot Mark. Uh, when Mark had his hand up in the air, like this, yes. it, it, the, the police first bullet went through Mark's arm and it hit the policeman standing behind Mark in his radio. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, so and what they've done, this, this, the police then spun a story to the IPCC saying that there was, um, there was a shootout where a policeman had got hurt. Yeah. And but then, I mean, it's, it's, it's absurd if uh, the gun, we were told a gun was found in a sock uh, 14 feet away from his body. So how would that have been a, a shootout? But then, then there was this serious riot, not only in Tottenham, not only in London, but all over England. That's correct. Now, now, now the reason that what, what actually uh, um, spread the... The, the fire of the riots yeah. was the simple fact that people were fed up over being repeatedly abused around stop the way the police were conducting stop and search. So that was the escalation yeah. that yeah. caused the escalation because people felt enough was enough. Yeah, that, that leads us to what you do because uh, we, we'll come back to Duggan in a moment. Uh, what do you do as a chair of hiring an independent stop and search monitoring group? Well, this, it's, that's, a, that's a position I've been holding for the last. 10 years wow. and, and, and what uh, what our group does is to hold the police to account okay uh, okay now how you hold to how do you hold the police to account what we do once a month we meet up regularly with um, senior police in Haringey to go through the uh, monthly stop and search statistics now these are figures that's published by the police um, that shows what each month, um, the stop and search that they've done, um, what area they're doing the stop and search in, okay. what's the reason they're doing stop and search, and who's most affected by the stop and search. From your, from your vantage position, given these statistics, would you say that they've been particularly targeting the black colour, or is, is it been even between black and white? No, they are targeting disproportionately the, the black community. Okay. And not black community, the black men, 
aged between 15 and 40 are the most likely uh, people to be stopped and searched. Now, you've got, to, you've got to understand the police use a various amount of tools yeah. to carry out um, their stop and search, okay? And one of, the t one of the tools they use is the Terrorism Act. Okay. Now, they used something called the Section 44 of the Terrorism Act, um, which meant that they didn't need to have no grounds to stop and search you. And, and, the, and the fact of the matter is, they stopped 101,000 people using that law, and not one arrest was made for terrorism underneath that law before it, it was repealed appeal in the European court yeah. to say that it was a racist law. Yeah, I, I remember that clearly and uh, the police are trying to say that they have uh, fine-tuned the way uh, they stop and search and they look at, uh, they, they, they work on tipples and things like that. They, they, they said that they work on intelligence, yeah. but, but the figures that I see every month shows that it's, they're not working on any kind of intelligence. What, what we're seeing is really Really lazy policing. What, what, the lazy policing means this: if you keep doing the same thing every month yeah. and stop, and, and if ten percent of your stop and if you're telling people that stop and search is is good for getting weapons off our street uh, and violent offenders off our street, then when I see the figures and I see that only five percent of your stop and search each month is for for, for weapons or violence, but yet. 70 or 8 percent of your search is is done for the misuse of drugs act mm. and what the police often say to us well we can't we can't smell knives and guns but we can smell cannabis oh. but, but let me say this much to you so can i but that doesn't, doesn't make me a policeman what that does it makes them a lazy police because <laughs> because if you're going to get the same sanction mm. for finding a bit of weed on somebody a personal possession as you're going to give them the same sanction as finding a knife and gun if i was a policeman i think i would actually go and stop people for for misuse of drugs than, than to weapons because they could kill me with a knife or gun what kind of trauma does these uh, stop and search have on the young black uh, men between 15 and 40 like you said i mean what are these traumatic experiences will it have a long psychological effect of not having been recognized and respected within their own community but let me put it this way for, yeah. the, for the last 40 years of the the, the abuse that mm. they've been having around stop and search the black community refers to stop and search as stop and scarred and and as a and, and as a person mm. who personally been stopped over 150 times you in, yourself uh, myself in that time i've actually also won my case back in 2009 where they paid me out 22000 pounds oh my on, a wrongful, <laughs> on, on, on a wrongful stop and search oh, I've, you I've understand gone, yeah. so i'm saying to you is that because the way that they have conducted, they have used that, that, that law, they've abused that law over the last 40 years, it's created a, a, a huge barrier between particularly black young men yeah. and the police. Now, as a consequence, what we're finding is people are less likely to come forward to support the police when we have any kind of violent incidents going on in, in our community. And people are, in, in, in our community are more reluctant, are more inclined to take the law into their own hands, yeah. which we find is abhorrent because we do not want volatile characters in our community yeah. walking with knives and guns and accusing other people of doing things and, and, and hurting people in our community. So we, need, so we need a police force so that is reflective of all our community. And uh, what, what kind of... You collected £22,000. That's uh, correct. Uh, some men are watching you right now and saying, I've been wrongfully stopped and searched. How do I make complaints, especially if I could make a few bucks? Let, let me say this. Let me. <laughs> let me. Say, and, and it took me five years to get that money. Oh, okay. okay. Right, but I'm saying it's, it's not overnight. It's not overnight. Quick mm. fix solution. Mm. But let me say this much to you. I, I, I would get on to another case that, that's relevant to what we're where we where we are today. Yeah. Now the police also had something called Section 60. Yeah. This was the Public Order Act. Okay. Uh, now what this meant was is that they, again they needed no suspicion to stop and search people.
Now, give you, let me give you some, some statistics. Okay. Like, for example, they call, the first one they call is PASAC. PASAC means that you need to have suspicion. You've got to have, so, and so you've got to follow a certain criteria to stop and search anybody under the PASAC. Oh, so right. that means you've got to have, you've got to have grounds. You've got, to, you've got to know what law you're, you're using. You've got to have um, suspicion. Yes. You've got to tell them who you are, what station you're attached to, and, and what you suspect that person that you're going to search. Yeah. So all these things are done under the PASAC. Now, at the height, if you was black, a black person in London, depending on which part of London you were, you were 10 to 15 times more likely to be stopped and searched than your white counterpart. Me, also, being mindful that we commit no more crime than any other community. Now, but when you have a law that has that needs no suspicion, it means that when they had these Section 60, mm. you were then... 37 times more likely to be stopped and searched as wow. a black man than a white man. Wow. Okay? But yet, what it was, the, the, the arrest rate of something like 5 6% a month is very low. And what we call the NFA, that's the No Further Action. Okay. The No Further Action is, <coughs> was running between 60 and 70%. Of, of people being stopped and searched, about 70-80% mm. had no further action. That means that they were innocent of, of any, uh, any crime. But yet, they were caught up in the, in the stop and search fishing <coughs> net. It's a, it was a fishing expedition. Mm. But, but, but then we've got to understand, if you look at the system, we could, we, uh, we, it's quite clear to understand why this happened. The reason this happened is, is that when a police, when a, a police cadet leaves the police Hendon and comes into our community, he's, he's given two years to perfect his stop and search in our community. What? So, 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 he's given, so, so they're giving the most junior officer the most intrusive power okay. to, 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 in, in, our, in our community. An officer still trying to climb the ladder at the lower level of the ladder is given the most intrusive power and he's likely to abuse it. And, and, and with very little supervision. Okay, wow. very little, and, and, and even when you were supervised by, by a chief inspector, the, the chief inspector will support you in your wrongdoing. They will cover that up. And, and so this is where the issues lie. You know, I was surprised the other day when I had David Lamy, Tottenham MP, said, I've been stopped and searched a few times. Even the MP of uh, Tottenham has been subjected to stop and search. So this did us know. Well, it doesn't surprise me because David Lamy don't walk around with a hat saying MP. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> and so, so anyone could be stopped and searched. That's right. And so anyone could have been stopped and searched. And let me just get back to the point I was trying to make here. Yeah. Back, back in 2010, yeah. after I'd won my case, a, a, a mother... Mm -hmm. who got stopped and searched yeah. under Section 60, called Ju Juliet Roberts. Yeah. She came to us after being stopped and searched on a bus because they said that her Oyster card was one pound under. Okay. Okay? Now, it, it meant that because her Oyster card was one pound under, the police took the opportunity to drag her off the bus, assaulted her, then arrested her. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Arrested her. Now, uh, under the Section 60 which meant that there was no suspicion yeah. that, she, that they needed. Now, as a consequence, this woman lost her job. She, wow. lost, her, she lost her livelihood, and she started to go and to challenge the police. And because of what she's done, they now have reduced that Section 60 by 99%. Whoa. Do you understand? Yeah. Do you understand? So that means that they hardly use it. In 2015... Yeah. For the last 12 months in Harangay, they have used Section 60 once. Okay, so why can't it? Yeah. So at, at its height, they used to use it thousands of times mm. in, in any given period. Do you oh, understand? Right. Yeah. So I'm saying, but because the reason that they, that, that they now are very mindful about yeah. using it, because that case is still ongoing all the way to the European Court. You, you could, you've got to understand mm. that what, uh, what happens is that you've got, when you've got the British legal system yeah. that is that's playing, that, that, is, that is party, and that, that, that's upholding an a, a institutionalised racist system, yeah. it's not surprising that the judges in the High Court, a judge called 
Judge McKay. Okay. Uh, Judge McKay. L let me pause you for a second. Would you like to answer telephone calls from our viewers? I, I, I'm open to any any. You're questions. open to... Okay, we have I a mean, caller I mean, right advice. now. So, okay. so they may ask you questions, and uh, I really want this to uh, be very, very elaborate. I'm, ve I'm very knowledgeable on stop and search. Anything <laughs> to do with that? Yes, hello. Who's calling? Hello, Mr. Johnson. I'm uh, Mr. Henry. Okay, where are you calling like from? This, uh, I, so, you, I don't like this uh, conversation. And I know when I read this in the paper, or when they started this uh, process about uh, my dog, I know that uh, it's going to all end up in this way. And uh, let us thank God that uh, uh, Britain is still on, under the European uh, human rights law. That's right. Imagine that uh, this, is, this is the reason why they say they want to come out of the European uh, human rights uh, law. They want to eradicate uh, 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 it. They, do, they want to come out. Mm. Imagine a tuition. If they come out of it, you know what? They, what imagine what they will be doing against us. This is why I'm very, very surprised because I live in Germany before. Why is it that the German police they never one day made mistakenly kill a black man? I live in Spain. They are three types of uh, policemen in, there, in, in Spain, and they all carry arms. They all arms. Even including the local government police in, in Spain, they never want to mistakenly kill a black man. Why is it that in this only in this country that we are criminals and everything? Or the, or the, or maybe they have forgotten that uh, who first, the question I'm asking is that who first come to who? And which, is it my, uh, my forefathers that first come here, or is it their forefathers who first went to a black man's land? Why okay. Is it not in this way? Okay, thank you, Mr. Julius. Now, now he's asking a question you may not be able to answer, but in essence, he's saying that uh, policemen in Germany and Spain, they've not been uh, killing uh, black men and arresting them like they do here. What is peculiar about Britain? Uh, what's peculiar about Britain is the simple fact that the police have got so much power, um, covert power, hidden powers. And what they do at the end of the day, they work, they work with un some unsavory characters in our community. Okay. So, it, so again, if they wanted to target someone like me, they may work with someone like yourself to try to, to, to get me in, in, in a compromised position. Okay, by using, and you may, you may have been known as a serial killer. They mm. don't care about your title, but they're more interested in doing something, getting, to, you. getting me, rather than getting you and your violent nature off, off our street. They're more interested in, in putting dirt or, 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 or trying to do something but I remember to bring they, harm they, to they, me. They, they repealed a law that you could use a lady to get a man. You remember when one man was done, I've forgotten his name now, and uh, they eventually discovered that uh, he was lured into bed by a lady, and then the British law now says never. You can't that, do that. that, that that's right. That, that was to do with the, that was to do with the, with the, the, the Wimbledon. Yeah, yeah really, Wimbledon. yes, that's the one. That's, that's the one. Right. And, and, and they said you can't do that's that right. anymore. That, 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 that's right. So and, they do a black man to a black man. Of, of course, of course. They, 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 what, they do is, what, they, what they do is that they allow people who are are uh, 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 some bad bad men in our community yeah they, they will go and do deals with them to go and get other people okay to target other people un un unfairly they okay. have done we'll, so we'll, 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 we'll still come back to this top and such because you are the chair of that one um i want to ask you how is the how are the family of uh mcdogan uh how have they coped between 2011 and now, and how did they respond to these uh, to these uh, new revelation from RPCC? Uh, they have coped. You know, they ha they have been the family has been devastated mm. by what happened to the to to, to their uh, to, to their family member, uh, and but 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 they've held themselves up with such dignity. Yeah. And, yeah. and even though they're saying that the riot was due to Mark Duggan, mm. it was not anything to do with the family. That was due. That was to do with the IPCC and their incorrect um, analysis yeah. that there was a shootout. That was not. That was not to do with Mark and his family, and because of the uh, the billion pound damage that had been done to the to, 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 to the to economy, the yeah. to the economy, and and, for, and six people dying as, as a consequence mm. of, of of the rioting, they now are trying to put all that onto the shoulders unfairly 
onto the family. The, the families held themselves up with, uh, um, beyond dispute. Yeah. Uh, right. They they have kept themselves looking professional. They have they have thrown it out there for people to go and to to go and get the evidence that's that's out there in the public domain. Yeah. Now, as I said beforehand, there was a coroner um, inquiry yeah. that lasted quite a number of months and what they've done they've written up the transcript and all these transcript is online okay now L let's take another caller but okay. i'm interested in the coroner's inquiry mm -hmm. because we thought that will do it and uh, give us the truth it never gave mm -hmm. now ipcc never but let's let's hear this caller hello who's calling hello clement is my name oh are you calling from london yes i am yes. okay go ahead sir yeah, I want to ask uh, our guest a question. Yes, Ken. Uh, uh, we, we know that the black community and the police do not trust each other to pay the least. Is there a way you think that that, uh, that mistrust uh, will be held? I mean, you get the black youth to trust the police? Because whenever there's anything going on in the black community, say a party or something, as soon as they see the police, they get aggressive, they get upset. Do you think there's a particular reason why that is so? And if you think that is if you think that is the situation, what do you think parents and the authorities will do to make sure that this doesn't happen? Uh, okay, that's, that's a great. Sarah, uh, uh, how can we come uh, close it's, together? It's, it's a great, it's a great question, mm. and quite clearly, yes, there, there's always room for improvement. But let me say this much to you: after after forty years of being repeatedly, uh, repeatedly targeted unfairly and unjustly, can you imagine that if you're a young man and you've been stopped four or five times in one day? Mm. Okay, there must come a time that uh, over a period of time that you get very upset. When you get, whenever you see the police, or you get stopped by the police. Now, what's happened is, is, is quite clearly that we, we, when with a through stop and search, the arrest rate for stop and search here in the Haringey is around about, um, said about six percent. Okay, six percent on stop and search. Right, so that yeah. means ninety-four percent of the people that stop and search are, 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 are innocent. innocent. Yeah. Okay, so so that means it. And if, and if you time that by 40 years, you can see and, and, and knowing that it's specifically disproportionately hitting the black and ethnic community more than any other community. Mm. It's not surprising to understand there's a big gulf between young people, young and black men mm. and the police. But let me say this much to you. It's not rocket science to tell me if every month you are spending 70 or 8 percent of your stop and search you are doing under the Misuse of Drugs Act and, and, and more specifically. Specifically, you're looking for you're you're you're, you're doing for cannabis, mm -hmm. and more specifically, you're targeting the area that has the highest ethnic um, uh, purpo uh, ethnic people that's involved, uh, uh, as opposed to the affluent areas. Yes. Now, let me say this much: uh, there's a report from Stopwatch, who does uh, um, marvelous work around drug uh, uh, drug rehabilitation, and what they what their report says that there's three million drug users, and that more white people uses drugs than black people of course and, yeah. and, and the white person drug of choice is class a whether it's cocaine or heroin okay but yet what the police tell me they cannot smell cocaine or heroin <laughs> but they can smell marijuana oh okay boy. Oh so, boy. so this is why they then put their resources into the poor part of the borough that's gonna dis that's going to hurt the black and ethnic community yeah. disproportionately. But then how can we now bridge the gap between the police and the young black men? Because at the end of the day, the police is your friend. Right. Right. So, well, it is two things. Yeah. First of all, what we're doing, we are, we are the face, the, the interface between the police and the community. Okay. And, and what we're doing here is that we hold, first of all, hold the police to account and we also engage with the young people to tell them about what their rights Okay. and responsibilities are mm. okay because it's very important because we've got cards like this okay okay this is cards, Le yes right? yes we can show these to the camera yeah okay and that's and this, mm -hmm. this is giving them tips mm. about how to avoid confrontation and arrest mm -hmm. on stop and search yeah now, now again we, if you it also got a website address with fuller details okay. about what your rights are but let me say this much to you is we've, we've argued the police that because you have abused stop and search so uh, for, for so many years it's no longer fit for purpose 
We need a different system. And I'm here called, don't get me wrong, we still want the, the, a different system. A different system. Now, you know what? That's going to be this different system we want to listen. But let me take a call up. Uh, then we'll go on a short break. Then you tell us detail about this system. new system. Because I'm interested in this new system. Yes, hello. He's calling. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon, your name, where are you calling from? Yeah, my name is Sola, I'm calling from Woolwich in London. Okay, from Woolwich, go ahead, what's your question? Ah, uh, yeah, um, good afternoon to your guest there. Yeah, good I, afternoon. Um, what happened is, uh, my, from my experience, the police have not been friendly to black people at all. Uh, in that 2011, something happened to me just around the midnight when I was just going on my own. And uh, within 10 seconds, a, a, a white guy and a lady, they were in the corner, were just going on my own. And I heard them saying, fuck, fuck. I've never smoked in my life. And I looked back, I didn't talk to me. I was going on my own. All of a sudden, this guy just came to me and hit me on my face. Just like that. I was just rolling on the floor. All of a sudden, I saw a white guy coming in front of me, ran to me, said, what happened? Well, you never did them anything. He was trying to help me. From my back, another guy coming, a black guy, came closer to me. I said, what happened? I said, I don't know. I couldn't even see. My phone was on the floor. This guy ran away. But this white guy took my phone and called the police and the ambulance. Under maybe five, ten minutes, the police and the ambulance came all together. They were attending to me, they took me to their van, and this white guy stood there with me and came to the police and said, look, this guy was just going on his own. He, he was just going on his own. He was a witness, he was a witness, he was a witness. You know what I mean? But yeah. at the end of the day, the police said, okay, 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 we're going to take care of that. I went in the ambulance, then I was, they took me to the hospital. After a while, the police came to me and said, they couldn't find the guy that hit me. And after that, the black guy stood there. The black guy saw them. The guy they went away, and they took the black guy in the car. When the the guy pointed the guy that hit me, so they arrested the guy. Okay. Yeah. So the next day, the police came to me and said, the guy said he wasn't the one. I said, okay, fine. But there was a white guy there, a black guy there. They saw everything. He, he went to the police and said, police, I'm the witness. This is my name. This is my address. Everything. The police said, okay, okay. So the next thing the police said to me, there is no witness. I said, no, somebody that was a witness there. They said, there is, there is, no, there is no witness. I said, what's going on here? You know, so for that reason, I believe police have failed us. And I don't have a trust with the police. Okay. I'm even scared of how much <clears throat> police than how robber in this country. All right. Thank you very much from Woolwich. Uh, police have failed us. How will you react? And what you said quite clearly, the people are more afraid of the police than they are afraid of the gangsters. And, and, and you know why? You're more likely to be stopped by the police than to be stopped by any gangsters out there. And this is why it's so important that we teach our youngsters about what their rights and responsibility is around stop and search. Mm. Because the police aren't going to tell you what your rights are. They are going to go and find, they, they're looking for a sanction. They're looking to arrest you so that they can get your DNA onto their database okay. okay and this is what's happening in, in far too uh, large greater numbers to the to people from the black and ethnic community mm. that are getting their dna on the police database all right uh, mr hens we're still interested in these uh, special uh, new system you you want it to be introduced uh, if, just in case you've just tuned in you've been listening to mr ken hens the chair of uh, Haringey independence top and search monitoring group uh, uh, we will go on a short break. When we return, we'll be listening to the new system that things could be refined and uh, help the community. And who knows, more black young men may join the police and help us with the situation. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Since 2015, free and fair elections. Make your choice wisely. Use your votes wisely. Vote wisely.
Hi, I'm Tunde Alabi. I'm here on Full Voice Radio and I'll be bringing to you information on politics, economy and social development. And to our listeners anywhere in the world, you can join me on Free Voice Radio London. As we now saw the diaspora, and of course, issues that have impact on us as the diaspora. Just keep listening to Free Voice Radio. Jam celebrities and presenters, Club Night is here. Come and party with us at Oxygen Nightclub, Leicester, 80 Wolf Street South, Leicester, LE1 2AA. Date 4th of April 2015, Easter Saturday. Time 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. Music by Blaze. Look, usually I'm jealous. Now I don't lose sleep if you go sleep without the fellas. DJs on the night from London, DJ A Star, DJ Sterling Reigns, and team. Free champagne for the best dressed couple. Should a door dance, competition cash prize. Admission is £10. VIP list is limited at the door. For ladies, guest list before 11 pm. Text your full name to the following numbers. Come and celebrate to the Jubilee at Ben TV Easter Jam. Welcome back to this special news update, and it is news update in this nation right now. We're talking about the McDogan IPCC report, and uh, we 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 are still, I mean, we the community, we are still baffled at how the IPCC has reached its own decision. Yet we have to discuss it within reasonable environment. Uh, we have joining us in the studio, Mr. Darren Henry, the vice chair of the Haringey Independent. Uh, stop and search monitoring group Darren, it's good to have you again good to be here good to be um, you. Um, you, you, you are just coming from a conference you have the bullet points of the uh, IPCC report would you like to tell us something more? Um, first and foremost one of the things that um, the family want to get across the IPCC is not fit for purpose okay? Okay. the Independent Police Complaints Commission is ex-police officers investigating police officers. Okay, I get your point, yeah. You see what I'm saying? So it's not independent. Like, we at the Haringey Independent um, Stop and Search Monitoring Group, we are totally independent. We don't get no um, subsidies from the police, nothing like that. It's the community um, holding the police to task, which should, the way it should be, really and truly. Yeah? So the, all the IPCC members, they were ex the, most of them, most are, of them. Are, are ex police officers investigate. It's like a, a, a cushy retirement number for them. Yeah, when okay. they leave the police force, some of them end up going um, onto the IPCC and also. Um, and why has the government not changed the composition? This is the question that the communities out there who have been affected by IPCC decisions really now need to start asking. And not only that, start asking, but we really do need to get a real, truly independent police com um, complaint commission where the public does have a say in what's going on. Well, the reasoning behind it is because, so, because some of the inf investigations can be so complex, yeah. they have to have somebody from um, a police background who is used to investigative work. Okay, Victor Olisi, the borough commander of Haringey, I'll be watching you right now. Uh -huh. And uh, he is the topmost man in the borough concerning police and he's worked with uh, on this top and search for many years before he got to this borough so what will you be telling him concerning stop and search in this borough at this moment concerning them um, stop and search in this time what we're trying to bring forth and bring forward is um, something what we call fair engagement, mm. all right, where we have... Um, is that a new system you are talking about? Yes, this, right. is, this is the system that Ken was talking to you before the break about, where we can have community-led initiatives. So if you take for argument's sake, over the last 40, 50 years, mm. we have grandfathers, fathers, children, and their um, great-grandchildren complaining about their interaction with the police. Now, this is an ongoing thing from... 
uh, we start. We 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 came here um, after the Second World War. Yeah, right through the seventies where they had SUS, right through to now. The problem is what people are not identifying or, or, or really not getting to the looks to. A lot of stop and search can lead to people getting a criminal record for life. People Absolutely. being jailed, unfortunately. Yeah, uh, there's what's called knock on offences. So you may not be arrested for the stop and search, but because you're so aggrieved at the way the police is. Um, After you, he's dealing with you, he's yeah. interacting with you, yeah. That there, there's a gulf that's grown between the African Caribbean community and the uh, police forces in the United Kingdom, and not just in the United Kingdom because stop and search really is okay. worldwide. If you look at what's happening, yeah, in America, there's one other thing I want to say here yes. also because I don't forget that sometimes the police instigate you to try to get you angry, yeah. So that so when you react or become aggressive, and 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 how they say black men like to express themselves using their hands. Uh, they, they, they take that as being aggressive. We, we have a telephone call, no and uh, you don't mind. No, uh, no uh, yeah, Ken has been taken. Yes, who is calling? Hello, my name is Mr. Ock. I'm calling from London. Okay, go ahead, sir. All right. Uh, I've been listening to um, this program um, since you started with uh, Mr. Lane there. Yeah. And the bottom line is, um, I see the point they are trying to make there. Well, at the end of the day, I want you to please to see if you can um, uh, advise to the man over there, the chairman of Harange, um, something stuff, that the attitude of black men, have we all looked at that at some point, to be honest with you? Black men are pure, they are gold, but their attitude towards the two of things, the way they behave, the way they you know, go outside, that for instance, a man uh, make an, a reference, he said, um, uh, the black people, how they deal with the play. Yes, yeah, fair enough, black people would like to show up. But their attitude, to be honest with you, is something else black communities should, you know, run you run. I'm, I'm going to allow them to uh, answer that question. Uh, but uh, have you considered that uh, we might have different ways of gestures? Uh, for instance, I know the African men don't like looking at their superiors or elders straight in the eyes. Mm -hmm. And you may consider that rude if you are a Westerner. And he, he can just yeah. said, uh, mm -hmm. you're suspicious. Mm -hmm. And can just said, many black men like to express themselves with raising up their hands. That could be he's raising up a gun, like in the case of McDougan, yeah, because right. there was no gun in his hand. That's Yet he raised his hand and he was shot on that hand. That's correct. But let me allow you to yeah. uh, respond. Let me, let me say this, let me just say this, first of all. Let's keep this real. Mm. There's less than 1% in our community that I would say that are, are involving gang violence or involving any kind of violence. But, but that, that's no different to any other community. But we can't go and then label all our black men as being p potentially violent because like, like us here, we, we are able to express ourselves using words mm. and, 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 and being non-aggressive. So what I see here is that, as I said to, this, to, the, to, the, to the caller, no mm. disrespect, I don't know if he's ever been stopped and searched, but as I explained to you, as a person who's been stopped and searched uh, uh, around 150... And who made, who made some grants, you know? 100, yeah, 150 times, and, mm. and, and, and also got paid compensation for a wrongful stop and search it shows me at the end of the day that the stop and search uh, is the is the issue itself because if i'm gonna be i felt i was repeatedly targeted not because i was involved in any wrongdoing but because of the color of my skin darren any attitude you think we should address concerning uh, young black men any special attitude you think uh, which uh, if you are attending to some like he said you are attending to some you are the bridge between the police and the young men that is which, which one so would you like to call this question? Yeah, I did English language at okay. university. All right. Yeah, when we use the word attitude, okay. put the adjective before the noun. Attitude does it just doesn't mean it's a bad attitude. Yeah, okay. attitude just means attitude. Yeah. Now, if you're talking about a good attitude or a bad attitude, yeah, I would say to the caller, yeah, if from you were being unfairly stopped. Mm. from the 50s through the 60s into the 70s into the 80s mm. wouldn't you have not say a bad age wouldn't you have a negative attitude towards those who you felt were victimizing you that is that is what i would 
ask the caller. Yeah, because we tend to use this word. We get, we get, we get trapped. I, th I, th I think that's a At good one. Attitude uh, doesn't I think mean. There's an English lesson going on here. I've never been to university lecture, English lecture now. Now I know between the good attitude and negative attitude. But it's just in the workplace where you are a bit moody or not cooperating. They say you have attitude. attitude yeah. But it's but wrong. It's I'm going to tell my boss. <laughs> and we have a caller who's calling. Hello? Is there a caller on there? Yes. Okay. Um, now, quickly, let's get back to Mark Dogan's family. Pam. Hello. Hello. Oh, hello. Who is calling? I'm Philip and I'm calling from Chimford. Oh, go ahead, sir, from Chimford, yeah. Yeah, I'm living in this country for closely 14 years now. And I can see where the police is a straight born racist. It's, there's no work over this. It's a problem that black people have, and some of us afraid to express ourselves even when they stop us. Because right now, the law that they're bringing in, what they're trying to tell black people is, you come in our country, we have to sniff coke, because if you smoke cannabis and it's in a system, we're going to lock you up. Now, we, I'm born and grew in Jamaica, I'm 44, and I spend the most part of my life work, smoking my cannabis. I never rap, I never kill, I never rape, I never go outside the box. As a black man, the people expect us all to. I've got three kids. Now, I'm working. When I come home from work, I'll be last place, relax myself. Now, they're trying to tell me in this country now, what I'm working, so you can't have fun, you must just work, lock down yourself, don't be seen, because black people system do not make for cocaine. Once black people take cocaine, they're going down a different street. I don't smoke nothing but weed. Okay. I drive. I drive to work. And even in the mark dubbing public in decision and as as the gentleman was expressed and I said, when police stop me, I'm so ignorant. The reason why? Because they come straight here with the racist sheet. They don't hit it. I leave work on evening, I'm going to exam, work on evening, driving, and I see two of at the bus, and I say, right, and let us, then let miss the bus, so I said, I make a go to the road and make a catch the bus. And just as I was, just as I was pulling out, there was a radio car with two policemen in it, BMW. The policemen then pull along, I pull out, then stop. Then start driving behind me, and I said to my friend, them, okay, here we go, we're going to stop. Because we were all laughing in the car. When the man them get out of my car, and go and catch a bus, the police then stop me and then said to me, the first thing the policeman come over and said to me, he said to me, why are you laughing? Oh my God. <laughs> so that's an offense. This is in, this is in, this is in Bali Lane. We were work, working in King George's Hospital for the past 12 years. So when he asked me why, why I laugh, I said to him, is it a crime to laugh? Is it a crime to laugh in this country? I don't want to be here anymore. Okay. And, I saw me, and yeah. then he said to me, he start look and he start look and take my car key and start my engine and turn my tire out. And said, come here, come here, come here, let us show you something. And he said to me, whenever time, when you almost, I said, listen to me, officer, it's either, either, do not talk to me about almost. Okay, okay. It's, it's, either, I'm, I'm, it's, I'm just... it's either the church finish mm -hmm. or it don't finish. Do not talk to me about Either or either. Uh, uh, how, how will you respond? Thank you very much. How will you respond to the gentleman uh, with what he has gone through? Even laughing is an offence. This is this is something that happens. We hear about regular. Listen, and and and, and, and if you're driving, this, a, this and, is... if you're driving a BMW, <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. And I they might refer to as a black man wagon, but the police uh, they refer to it as bait. <laughs> I thought okay. it was Bob Marley and the winners. <laughs> In the standard, mm. the evening standard today, mm. yeah. There is a man who um, Ken went to court to be a witness on his behalf, um, Daniel Sylvester, mm -hmm. yeah, who's just been awarded, I think it's almost £10,000, wow. okay. because his um, vehicle yeah, was uh, supposedly, said the police, registered to a known criminal beforehand. Mm -hmm. Because of that, this is not the present owner, this was the previous mm -hmm. owner. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, because of that, he was getting stopped. Yeah, and he got stopped, I think it was on the second or third time, 
when he got stopped, mm. they actually tasered him. Wow. And I was there. And yeah. I and, and Ken witnessed this, yeah? You read it today in the Evening Standard. Standard. Yeah, this is a man, yeah, who has his own security business. Me and it's, Ken, he's a, we a, di a director. director. He's a director of his own security business. As security operatives, we work in conjunction with the police. Okay. Yeah, with Haringey Stop and Search. Yeah, we try to sh um, hold the police to account, so we have to go into briefings with them, and that hasn't stopped the police from stopping Ken. Okay, let me ask you this question. Since uh, the Stephen Lawrence saga, where they said there was uh, institutional racism it's, it's in the McPherson. police. Yeah, so, yeah, so uh, has anything changed? Not really, not at all. This is what um, Doreen Lawrence, yeah. Yeah, Baroness Lawrence. Yeah, yeah, Baroness, yeah. The Baroness, the good Baroness, one of the first things she said when she got into the House of Lords is that she explained that since the time of Stephen Lawrence, yeah. since um, Lord Justice uh, Macpherson came out with the report saying yeah, that the Metropolitan Police is institutionally racist, and that could be applied to the justice system across the board. That's the right. Metropolitan right. Police, That's the Probation Service, the um, Prison Service, the courts, that okay. could be applied to them. Since he came out and said that, yeah. yeah what Baroness um, Lawrence has made clear, nothing has changed. Let's take this then. call and then we'll, we'll see continuing this trend. Yes, hello, who's calling? Yes, yeah, it's Vivian. Oh, go ahead, Vivian. Yeah, thank you for taking my call. Um, I just want to thank... Um, the two gentlemen. <laughs> yeah, the two gentlemen for a good, you know, a, the job they are doing. Okay. They're doing a great job and may God continue to bless them. Thank you, sister. Them. Thank you. Amen. Um, actually, my reason for calling is uh, regarding about, you know, what you're discussing. Um, to be honest with you, as a black person who is living in this country, I think every bl black person that is living in this country has a contribution to make. Yes, of course. To so remove this stereotyping. It's not just police alone, but also the politicians, if you look at all the political parties, you hardly see any black uh, politician among the three uh, political parties. Yes, they have one or two or three or there and there mm -hmm. just uh, uh, cover up uh, or tell the world that actually we are doing a good job and this and that. What does that tell our children? What does that tell the youth in this country? Wherever you go, they judge you before they even speak to you. Particularly if you have, when they speak to you and you have an African accent, it even makes matters worse. <laughs> <laughs> and if you have a Caribbean accent, oh no, <laughs> they call us before we even, right. we even arrive at our destination. So it's, we got a great deal of um, um, uh, job to do. Le Vivian, let me ask you this question. Does this kind of traumatize you, trying to give you an inferiority complex within the system we find ourselves because of these persecutions? Actually, it doesn't, you know, uh, in fact, it gives me more courage and power because at the end of the day, I see, yeah, I have a lot of contribute. In this, in this society, this if I is can good. do it this is in good. Africa, I mm. can also contribute more if it needs education, educating our white brethren. Because even in the churches, you see that there is segregation everywhere. Mm. They have African churches, they have uh, 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 white churches, they have Caribbean. You know, things are going on and we cannot, I think we are, we, we're supposed to stand up. Yeah, we're supposed to stand up for our rights. We should no longer be sitting down and be beating down always and talking in our little corners without taking action. Uh, uh, so Vivian, thank you. It's just about time. Thank you very much. Thank she, you she, very much for yeah, thank you very much, Vivian. She yeah. said even the society is involved, not the police alone. Is how far is that correct? Yeah, it's correct. This is why we're talking about fair engagement. This is this is what Tell we're us saying. About this fair we're engagement. saying that what what needs to happen is mm. is that the community, yeah, need to get involved, yeah, and explain, especially in our local communities, how we want our boroughs to be police, police yeah right. not only that what we have put forward as well we what we're saying is we need our police in the borough to be reflective 
of our barrel. Because what right. you find is a lot of. But the police said they're recruiting black men. They couldn't find enough. Uh, well, it's not. It's not surprising because if they're going to bring him into a racist system, then these the people coming into this they will be very apprehensive about joining in. But what we say, what we say to our people yeah. is, is that you've got to be in it to make a real change. Yeah. To bring about real change. But you, you, you know, you know what I have from my on my desk. 70 young men went for recruitment in the four weeks ago in the, into the police. And 70 young black men and women, they were there and they were told that they had stopped recruitment months ago and they could not be recruited. Even though it was in the news that they were recruiting and looking for young black people. Quote me. Because some of them came back to me to say they lied to us. They're not recruiting any young. They're not giving them preference. Quote me that I said so. These young people went to the police and said, yes, here we are. And they gave them a date. Some young, some police officers were there. And uh, finally, they were told that, no, sorry, we have stopped recruiting months ago. But the news was saying we are recruiting young black men. But in reality, they have stopped recruiting. And you can quote me. At, at this present time, I do know for a fact that British Transport Police yeah. is recruiting. Okay. Yeah? I know that for a fact. Right now, okay. right here today. The other thing we say to our... And, and, and young black men and women can go. Don't let a criminal record put you off. Yeah? Okay. Because what a lot of people are not aware of, they think, oh, if you've got a criminal I can't be a police officer. No, no, no. The police forces with the most criminals, with criminal records in them, yes, they're white, yeah, or Caucasian, yeah, is the Metropolitan Police, yeah, and also the Greater Manchester Police. These two police forces have Caucasian or white men with criminal records, some of them with serious crimes yeah, that they have done, but they have been allowed through the recruiting process. Uh, so this is what we're, we're really saying. These are the things that we need to challenge, but sometimes the black community, we can get apathy. We think, ah, oh, we can't be bothered. We can't work it. Okay. We can't take that attitude. The young people are depending on us. We, we, we operate on time here. Okay. Um, and uh, let me say we've enjoyed your presence. But uh, if Pam Dorgan has been watching us and we're about to close right now, uh, Ken, what will you say to Pam? I, I'm saying that what we feel her pain and we're standing shoulder to shoulder with her. We were there to, with the, for, the long, for the long haul. Um, and we are going to, we're going to, to use whatever legal method that's there um, to show that we are law-abiding people. But we're people that's resilient and people who will fight to the very end until we get justice for Mark and compensation for six orphan children. Darren, one and, statement. And Ma Pam has said the decision by the IPCC doesn't surprise her. The one statement I want to make, somebody's lying. Either the coroner is lying and the inquest is lying, or the police is lying. And bear in mind that the coroner, yeah, nearly done the IPCC for contempt of court because they were not transparent in their investigation. So we want the community not to forget this because what they've done is they have allowed the narrative that has now come out yeah. to come out after the facts. Oh. So they, they've allowed, yeah, if you like, they made so many mistakes, they put everybody on pause, okay. now they, make, they let certain cases and certain thank people be convicted, thank you. Thank, thank now they come with a story. Thank a you, cover Darren. Up. Well, cover up. That's how far we can go. Uh, I want to thank you, gentlemen. Uh, Ken, is wonderful having you here. Darren, it's wonderful having you here again. You. We will always call on you. We need you. We need your intelligence. We need your activities. We need your experience. Uh, and if um, I may add, we need some of your pounds, Darling. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how far we can go. We'll be giving you special news updates as we find it. Don't forget, uh, listen to Vivian. Don't let this put you down. You are a human being. You are part of the community human race and raise up your head high. Do not allow anybody to put you down. My name is Shaggy Johnson. Until next time, we'll be giving you news updates. Don't go away. This is Ben Television. <laughs>